and let's lift our hands to the most high God and begin to bless his holy name let's begin to worship the Almighty worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords bless the ancient of days magnify his holy name worship him he is the Almighty all power belongs to him there's nothing too hard for him. He's a great healer. He's our maker, our creator. He can make the impossible possible. He can reverse the irreversible. He can make dry bones live again. Praise him. Give him all glory, give him all honor, give him all adoration. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Give him all glory, all honor, all adoration. Bless him. It's worthy, it's worthy, it's worthy to be praised. Magnify his holy name. Magnify his holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's lift our voices to him and say, Father, this very moment, heal every sick person. Open your mouth and call on him. This very moment, Lord, heal every sick person. We know you can do it. It is written in the evening when the sun was set, they brought the sick to you and you heal them all. Please heal all tonight. Heal the sick this very moment, Lord. Make the sick whole again. You've done it before, do it again, Lord. That your name might be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory.
Almighty God, we give you all the glory. Ancient of days, we give you all the honor. The I am that I am, the unchangeable Lord, we bow before you. Our maker, our savior, our healer, our provider, our all in all. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you are going to do tonight. And thank you in advance for what you will do tomorrow. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, we are praying that tonight your healing virtue will flow like a mighty river. And it will bring healings to everyone listening to us right now in Jesus' name. You've done it before. Do it again, Lord. So that at the end of tonight, we will all go home singing a new song. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Uh, let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, shake hands with one or two people and say good evening. God bless you mightily. And then you may please be seated. As of 6 p.m. this evening, the number of babies born during this Congress stands at seven. Three boys and four girls. Including a set of twins. Well, so let the girls shout praise the Lord. And let the boy shout hallelujah. I will want you to inform your friends, your relatives, co-workers, particularly your enemies, that they shouldn't miss tomorrow. Uh, because tomorrow is deliverance night. And that's why I want you to bring your enemies along. By the time we finish tomorrow, your enemies will become your friends. And if they miss tomorrow, anyone who misses tomorrow, would have missed half of the whole Congress. Tell them they should come tomorrow. Like I told you yesterday, traffic will get better by the day, and tomorrow will be a glorious day. If I were to ask those who came yesterday to introduce themselves to those who are near them, you will hear some interesting introductions. You hear somebody say, I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Tonight, you are going to add another name to your list of names. 
and that is I am a branch of life I am a branch of the life John 15 I'm reading from verse 1 to 5 John 15 from verse 1 to 5 Jesus Christ said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do Nothing. Jesus Christ said, I am divine. And ye are the branches. So Adeboye is a branch of Jesus Christ. What about you? And because you are a branch of Jesus Christ, that's why you are living here tonight completely whole. But much more than that, because the Lord told me this year's Congress is going to be different from all others, much more than that, beginning from tonight, God will begin to use you to heal the sick. <laughs> Jesus said, I am divine. Who is divine? Basically, Divine is a combination Okay Basically Divine that is Jesus Christ. It's a combination of divinity and humanity. I think an engineer needs some healing. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a combination of God a man. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 14. John 1, verses 1 and 14. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh. And we beheld this glory. Uh, the, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is God, 100% God, and at the same time, when he was here on earth, 100% man. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, Matthew 3, 16 to 17, when he was baptized, as he was coming out of the river, the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove, and God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, 
in whom I'm well pleased. But then in Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, Matthew 8, verse 20, you hear him saying, I am the Son of Man. So he's Son of God, at the same time, Son of Man. And you see this combination of divinity and humanity in Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. The Bible says Jesus was in a boat with his disciples. And he was fully asleep. There was a storm, but he was so tired, he slept through the storm. The humanity slept. But once they woke him up, the divinity spoke and said to the storm, Peace be still. And everything became calm. Now we all know that divinity never sleeps. He that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. But because the divinity was wearing humanity, the humanity slept, the divinity took control of the storm. Now, as divine is, so are the branches. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, As he is, so are we in this world. Many what? If you are a true Christian, you are a combination of humanity and divinity. I prove it to you. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 32. Mark 6, 30 to 32. The Lord said to the disciples, Come ye aside and rest a while. Your humanity needs help. You need sleep. You need rest. So no matter how anointed a man of God may be, he needs rest. I know some of us don't believe that. We don't believe that the pastor should sleep. <laughs> I have good news for you. Even the general overseer needs some rest. But if you are a true Christian, according to 2 Peter chapter 1, from verse 2 to 4, 2 Peter 1, 2 to 4, you are made partakers of the divine nature. You are human, but you are partakers of divinity. So, divine is a combination of divinity and humanity. The branch is a combination of humanity and divinity. Now, the branch can do nothing except through the ability supplied by the vine. That's what he said in John 15, verse 5. Without me, you can do nothing. Even the vine 
himself. The Lord Jesus himself, when he was here on earth, did all the works he did through the Father. John 14, verse 10. John 14, verse 10. He said, The Father in me does the work. And then he turned to the branch and said, the works I did, you shall do also. Meaning what? You see me healing the sick. That's Jesus saying to the disciples. You see me healing the sick, you too shall heal the sick. You see me performing miracles, you too will perform miracles. Why? Because I will supply the power, the strength, the ability from within. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things. How many things? Through Christ, which strengthens me. Every branch of the vine can do everything that the vine can do because the vine supplies everything that the branch needs to do the work. And so the, the branch of the vine is far, far more powerful inside than it may look outside. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Question is, who is that that is in you? The one who is in the vine is also the one who is in the branches. Which will make you understand what happened in that story, Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41, that I mentioned earlier on. Mark 4, 35 to 41. When that storm was raging and they woke up Jesus Christ and he rebuked the wind and the wind became calm he turned around and rebuked the disciples say why do you wake me up why don't you steal the storm yourself. Why are you of so little faith? If only you will please join your faith with mine tonight. Beginning from this moment, you will be healing the sick. Uh, I wasn't even expecting the amen to be that loud. Because I'm still explaining. You will, you will get it. You're not the one who will do the healing. It is the one in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And what are the things that are in the world? One of them is sickness and disease. The one inside of you, if you are a Christian, if Christ is in you, 
the one that is inside of you is greater than sickness, is greater than disease. And God is expecting you to heal the sick. So one of the reasons why he says your glory is ahead is that beginning from tonight, you too will be healing the sick. Specifically, divine is the life. In John chapter 14, verse 6, John 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that life that is divine is living in the branch. Galatians 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 verse 20. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. I told my children in the month of October, I said, nobody can kill me. They looked surprised. And then I told them why. I said, because I'm already dead. You can't kill a dead man. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Who is living in you? Let me hear you say it loud and clear. I'm, I'm, I'm being very slow so that you can get this point very clearly because it's very important. Very, very important. Because we are going to leave this Congress completely changed. You're going to live as a light shining, as salt impacting your society, as a branch of the life healing the sick. Now, because Jesus is living in you, his blood is what is flowing in you now. On the outside, it may not appear to be so, but in actual fact, the blood that is flowing in you now just as the fluid that is flowing in the vine is what is flowing in the branch, the blood that is flowing in you is the blood of Jesus. And according to Revelation chapter 12, from verse 10 to 11, Revelation 12, verse 10 to 11, that blood has enough power to overcome the devil. The implication of it is this. If only you can believe it, the blood that is flowing in you now can overcome any jam, any virus, any deadly thing. Because Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. The devil comes, or the thief comes, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
but I am come that he might have what? Life. And how are you to have it? Abundantly. Oh, I know some of you will say, Sir, are you not taking this thing too literally? Oh. It is written, The just shall live by faith. There are several things happening in the world today that science cannot explain because they are not happening in the realm of humanity, but they are happening in the realm of divinity. And some of you will remember the testimony of one of our sisters. A husband is a doctor. One of the doctors who treated a man who had Ebola. And all those who treated that man because they didn't know that the man had Ebola became infected. And the husband was dying. And he came. And it was Holy Communion night. And we bless the bread and bless the wine. And said the bread is symbolic of the body of Jesus. The wine is symbolic of his blood. And she took a little bit, a bit of bread, a bit of wine, ran back to her husband and gave it to him. And he was healed instantly. May I decree right now that whatever is called sickness or disease, jammed or virus in your system, may the blood of Jesus consume them. <laughs> what is in you right now? Because Christ is in you, his blood is flowing in your veins, and his spirit is inside of you. And Romans chapter 8, verse 9 to 11, Romans 8, 9 to 11 says, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. To quicken means to make a life. To quicken means that which is dead is resurrected. For example, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3, a leper came to Jesus. And if you have ever seen a leper before, you know what that means. A leper is a walking corpse. He's carrying death in his body. Part of the fingers would have dropped off. Part of the toes, gone. Death inside his body. He came to Jesus. Jesus gave him just a touch. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Acts 3, 1 to 8. Peter said to the lame man, silver and gold I find none, but what I have, there is something in me that I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, of night, rise up and walk. And he touched the man, he held him by the hand. The same procedure 
that Jesus used to quicken the leper was used by Peter and immediately the leper began to walk to jump and to praise God I've told you the story before of an elderly chief who was paralyzed from waist downward and because he was a wealthy man they took him to the best hospital in London and after he'd been there for six months or so the doctors the, the lead doctor took a very long sharp pain and said chief look at me and the chief looked at him as he drove the pain through his thigh and asked the chief, do you feel anything? The chief said, no. The doctor said, there's nothing anybody can do for you. Go home. And they brought him home. And one little girl, a member of this church, went to him and said, I know somewhere where if they pray for you, you will walk again. And they brought the chief. Several hefty men carried him into my living room. And I shared this passage with him. If you give your life to Jesus, the moment Jesus comes in, the spirit that quickened, that raised Jesus from the dead, will quicken your mortal bodies. He gave his life to Jesus. They carried him in. He walked back to his car. There is a spirit within you that from today onward we begin to heal the sick. If you believe that, let your amen be loud and clear. If Christ is in you, his power, his virtue will be flowing through your vein. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians 3, verse 20 says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think according to the power that works where in you it is beyond human imagination what God can do through you because there is a power resident in you. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, the moment Christ begins to dwell in you, God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or even think, according to the power that is working in you. For example, Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, tells us of the story of a woman with the issue of blood who said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. That there is enough power in the vine. That if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Not himself now. I'm not asking him to lay hands on me. There is enough power flowing out into his dress. The woman came, touched the hem of his garment, and was made whole. 
And then we see in Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, Acts 19, verses 11 and 12, that from the body of a branch of that vine, Paul the apostle, aprons and handkerchiefs were taken to the sick, and the sick were healed as they touched the handkerchief that came from the body of Apostle Paul. How many testimonies have you heard of handkerchiefs that have been anointed here, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing the unimaginable? In fact, some of the... Yes, go ahead. Give the Lord a big round of applause. Some of the testimonies are so big, at times we are afraid to share them. Because we know that some believers will become unbelievers when they hear what God is doing. I had a testimony last night. I've just returned from Togo. I went on a missionary tour of West Africa. And one of the towns where I stopped, uh, one of the countries was Togo. And uh, I was preaching, and there was a man there, a senior government official, who saw the power of God coming down and was blaming himself when he left the prelates. If I had known that this is what would happen here, I would have brought my sick fellow, whether sick mother or somebody, to the place. Oh, I didn't bring her. And the man of God is going tomorrow. Suddenly it occurred to him. But I was there. Why don't I pray for my mother? And he laid his hand on the mother, prayed a simple prayer, and the mother was healed immediately. You are here tonight, and in the name that's above every other name, from this moment onward, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. <laughs> Whatever is in him, is in you. And because it is in you, you can use it to perform whatever miracles he alone can perform. I can go on and on. I can talk about his word that is in you. I can talk about his compassion that is in you. But I want to go a little faster so that we can begin to perform the miracles even tonight. Every branch of the vine can do what the vine can do. You can then imagine what happens when you bring two branches together. What happens if two of us should agree tonight that from this moment onward we will begin to heal the sick? What do you think will happen? He said in Matthew 18 verse 19, Matthew 18 verse 19, he said, if two of you shall agree, concerning anything you ask on earth. 
It will be done for you by our Father in heaven. Is there anyone here at all tonight who will agree with me that every sick person here tonight will be healed? Is there anyone like that here? Now, I know some of you will say, sir, we thank God for your life. We, we have seen miracles happening. We have heard the testimonies. Uh, but then, you are the general of us here. And that's why, that's why these miracles are happening. He didn't say, these signs shall follow the general of us here. Mark 16. From verse 17 to 18. He said, These signs shall follow them that do what? How many believers are here tonight? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. You you will want to say then, wait a minute. You said this sign will follow them that believe. But my faith is small. I have good news for you. I had that problem before. I believe that, yes, everything that is in the Bible is true. I can do it if only my faith is big enough. And I fasted and I prayed. And when I said I fasted, I mean I fasted. Real fast, not... <laughs> uh, not Daniel fast. The real one. I fasted. I prayed. And I was asking for only one thing. Lord, make my faith big enough. So I can perform miracles for you. Then one day God, out of his mercy, sat me down and asked me some questions. I'm going to ask you the same questions. And you answer the questions the way it is. He said to me, son, Do you believe there is God? I'm asking you the same question now. <laughs> Have you seen him before? But how do you know there is God? Ah, I believe. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? How do you know? Were you there when he was born? I believe. Do you believe he died and rose from the dead? Are you sure? Were you there when it happened? Do you believe he's coming again? Uh, answer me now. Then why are you saying you are not a believer? Your faith is strong. It takes very strong faith to believe that there is God. It takes strong faith to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It takes strong faith to believe that a man died and rose again. It takes strong faith to believe that he's coming again. How many of you believe all these things? <laughs> you 
You may not believe it before today, but you are a man, a woman of strong faith. Strong faith. And you are going to put that faith to work tonight. Ah, I know that the next thing you are going to ask me is, ah, well, what if I pray for somebody and the fellow does not get healed? What if you pray for the fellow and the fellow gets healed? Why do you have to look at the negative first before looking at the positive? He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Is God a liar? Oh, I know the next question you will ask me is, that the, even with your faith, is it everybody you pray for who got healed? No. And I was bothered by that for some time. Until God told me that death is the final healing. Dead people never fall sick again. We are not talking about you changing the appointed time. When the appointed time comes, the fellow will go. We are talking about you making sure that those who are around you, whose time has not come, will not spend the rest of their life in sickness. We are talking about everybody near you from this moment onward, living in divine health. How many of you want that one to happen? Let me hear you say amen. How many of you believe you are going to be the vessel unto honor that God will use? You really want that one to happen? It will begin from tonight in Jesus' name. Oh, but I know. I, I know how many, how many questions the devil threw at me. Suppose you pray for somebody and the fellow doesn't get well immediately. Eh, pray again. When the child is learning to walk, the first time he takes a few steps, he falls. He gets up, takes a few steps, and falls again. Have you ever seen a child who is learning to walk, who falls and cries? Each time he falls, he laughs. Because something inside the child tells the child, you may be stumbling now, but very soon you'll be running. Beginning from this moment, in the name that's above every other name, you'll be healing the sick. Unless you are not a branch of the vine. Unless you disconnect yourself from the vine. He said, abide in me. Even as my word abide in you. Because without me you can do nothing. Those of us who are committed to abiding in Jesus Christ, there are some of us here tonight. It doesn't matter what anybody may do. We are not leaving Jesus. There are some of us here, no matter, it doesn't matter what anybody may offer you, you cannot cease to be a Christian. If you are one of such people, let me see your hand. 
as long as you remain connected to him, the power in him will flow through you and perform the miracles. Daddy explained to me years ago when I was a small child in him, son, when I ask you to lay your hands on the sick, they feel your hand, but my hands will be the one laid on your own hands to perform the healing. Abide in him. And from now on, as a branch of the one who is called the life, the life of God will be flowing through you into several others. It's time to pray, but before we pray, if you are here and you are not yet attached to Jesus Christ, you haven't given your life to him, and so you are not a branch of the vine, but you want to be, you want to stop pretending to be a Christian, you want to become a true Christian, you want to become attached to the vine, I will count from one to ten that you come forward and surrender your life to Jesus Christ and he will save your soul and you become one of the branches of the vine who is also the life. So, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I invite you to come now. I'm going to count from one to ten. And before I say ten, you must come and stand before me. I will pray for your salvation and you become a branch of Jesus Christ. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, Nine. Good. Thank you. Those of you on the way, keep coming. Those of you already in front, talk to the Almighty God and ask Him to have mercy on you. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to make you part of him. That you want to become a branch of Jesus Christ from this moment on. Cry unto him. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Pray that God will receive them into the family of God and they become branches of the almighty Jesus. Let's intercede for them, brethren, for just a minute or two. Stretch your hands towards them and pray for them. 
pray for their salvation. Pray that the Almighty God will give them a brand new beginning. Pray that God will receive them into the family of God. Pray for them, brethren, and cancel us. We will begin to move close now. If anybody still wants to come to surrender his or her life to Jesus, come now as I'm about to pray for salvation. Hurry up, hurry up, those of you on the way. Keep coming. Don't stop by the way. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to give you all glory and honor. Because you said in your word that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Attach them to yourself tonight. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become members of the family of God. And from now on, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who are in front, I want to rejoice with you. Because from now on, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. The counselors will give you some cards, which you should fill very quickly. And then return it to the counselors. And I promise you, from this moment onward, I'll be praying for you. God bless you. But I want you to stay where you are. You can join us in the prayer we're about to pray. The rest of us, if you believe, if you would just agree with me that the prayer we're about to pray, God is going to answer, stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. The, the first prayer you are going to pray is for yourself. You lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, Everything that is in my system that is not of God, let your blood consume tonight. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Everything in my system that is not of God, every sickness, every disease, every jam, every virus, everything in my system that is not of God, let your blood consume right now, right now, right now. Let your blood consume right now. That blood that can conquer Satan, let it conquer everything that is not of God in my system every jam every virus every sickness every disease let your blood consume right now Jesus mighty name we have prayed now we are going to join hands together we are going to let the power of agreement between more than one vine more than one branch begin its work you lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say father let your spirit Quicken the body of my neighbor right now. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. 
let your spirit quicken the body of my neighbor right now let your spirit let your spirit quicken the body of my neighbor right now everything that is dead in his body or her body that needs to come back to life let your spirit quicken the body of my neighbor right now right now right now your spirit quicken the body of my neighbor right now right now right now let your spirit quicken the body of my neighbor right now make him whole make her whole do it oh lord Your father in Jesus mighty name we have prayed with your hands see joined together I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say father we are in one accord in your church let there be no more cancer Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Please cry to the Almighty God. We are all in one accord. We come against cancer in any form whatsoever. We come against cancer. We're in one accord, Lord. We will come against every form of cancer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, I want you to lift your hands to God. And I beg you that you please pray this prayer with all your heart. I said, Father, Father, from now on, when I lay these hands on the sick, let them recover immediately. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. From now on, Lord, when I lay my hands on the sick, let them recover instantly. I'm a branch of you and you are the life when I lay my hands on the sick from now on Lord 
and then recover. Jesus mighty name we have prayed for your final prayer let me just explain something some years ago I went on a missionary journey to a country in Africa and the food they gave me was something else And I kept on going to the toilet again and again. I think it was after 23 times. And who is going to pray for me? It just occurred to me that God said, You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If the sick is me, then I can lay hands on myself. I lay my two hands on my own head. And I commanded healing. And I was healed instantly. Lay your two hands on your own head. And command healing into your system. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command healing to you, my body. Hear me. I command healing to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now. Be healed, body. I command healing to you right now from head to toe every bit of my body i command healing to you right now be healed in the mighty name of jesus be healed in the name that's above every other name i command healing to you body be healed be whole absolutely whole And remain whole from now on until I see Jesus in glory. Body, behold, command healing into you, my body. Behold. Thank you, Father. Jesus mighty name we have prayed with those hands still on your head I want to pray for you now my father my God I want to thank you for your word I want to thank you that you are divine and we are your branches and I want to thank you that the works that you did we shall do also Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Daddy, I'm in agreement with all this, your children. And I say right now, right now, right now, let your healing power begin to flow through all of them. I command your healing into every one of them right now in Jesus' name. And I hereby decree every one of them from this moment onward when they lay hands on the sick let the sick recover in Jesus name and even before tomorrow morning let the testimonies be many thank you almighty God in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Put those hands together for the Almighty God and shout a big hallelujah.